morning, and welcome to Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center is where we believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. We are Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, where our motto is inspiring ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship. God, we bless you. And we praise you. And we lift you. We can't praise you without an outward expression. So wherever you are, I dare you to just open your mouth and praise him. You can't keep praise on the inside. You got to put that on the outward, on the outside. Somebody open your mouth and praise him. When we praise God, it invites him into our situation. It puts him on the scene of our circumstance, wherever we are. The Bible tells us that he inhabits the praises of his people. His home is in our praise. I dare you, wherever you at, for about 10 seconds to just give God a praise. No matter what you're going through, I dare you to just give God a praise. I dare you to just open your mouth and praise him this morning. Tell him how good of a God he is. Tell him how magnificent of a God he is. Tell him how excellent he is. I dare you to forget about what you're going through. And put your mind on him and just praise him this morning. God, we bless you. And we praise you, Father. God, we came to praise you because you're so good. You're one of a kind. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Here we go. Wherever you at, can you just lift your hands right here? Bless your name, Jesus. This is an old song, old melody. Just say, when you pray, say. When you praise, when you praise. There should be a fire. There should be a fire in your heart. Hands are raised. Hands are raised when you praise. Consuming. Consuming. The God we serve, the God we serve will make his presence known. When you pray, when you pray, can you say it again? When you pray, say, there should be, hands are raised. Like this. 
says, listen, it says, praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. So sing it with us. Say praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. I will praise him one.
Something happens when we praise. Something shifts when we praise. Oh God, your presence is here when we praise. You move whenever we praise you, Jesus. You shake some things up whenever we praise you, Jesus. You make some things clear whenever we praise you, Jesus. Whenever we take our mind off of our situation and put it on you. Things happen, God. Things happen, God. Things happen, God. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. by today's worship. Now, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive a fresh word from the Lord from our very own phenomenal teacher and spiritual leader of Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee. if you don't have your Bible. Let's read. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Let's read the last line. And could not shake it. Come on, y'all, hear what I'm saying? And could not shake it. Why? Because it was founded upon a rock. And could not shake it. And could not shake it. Uh, let's go to the, the next thing. Uh, uh, say this with me. My 2022 will be greater than 2021 because I'm using different building material. Did y'all hear what I say? Come on, let's say it together. 
my 2022 will be greater than 2021 because I'm using Say this with me, it's gonna be better. It's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be broader. It's gonna be greater. Incredible. Magnanimous. Stupendous. Excellent. Amazing. Outstanding. Victorious. Miraculous. Spectacular. Unequivocal. Remarkable. 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 Now, if you believe it, give the Lord a hand for it. Be seated. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. And so this was, uh, we had a, a great move of God in prayer on last Sunday, and we didn't get a chance to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. But I, I just want you all to know that in that last verse, it says, I will tell you who he's like, verse 48. It says, he's like a man that built his house and dig deep and lay the foundation. I don't know what y'all did in 2022, but in October, I start digging deep. In October, I start laying the foundation because I know the flood is going to arrive. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? The flood is going to rise, but it's going to beat vehemently upon my house, but it can't shake it. Look at somebody say it can't shake it. It can't shake it uh, because my house is founded upon a rock. And so people, now we're in, God has afforded us the opportunity to enter into a new year, uh, into a remarkable year. Uh, look at somebody saying it's going to be the remarkable you in 2022. Uh, and, and so therefore, uh, God has enlarged our territory. He's enlarged our territory. We went through all this in October and uh, uh, November and in December. And, and we think uh, on a bigger scale now. We're dealing with our lives and the things that we're believing God for on a bigger scale. Somebody say bigger scale. Uh, and when we're talking about the year of the remarkable, 2022, the year of the remarkable you, look at this. It's not a New Year's resolution. It's a new life resolution. Uh, look at somebody say, it's not a New Year's resolution. It's a new life resolution. Uh, Ah, people of God, it's time for my life to change to the remarkable. It's time for my life to change to the exceptional. It's time for my life to change to that which is incredible. Uh, and so we challenge you, we challenge you all last year for October, uh, November, and December to start getting ready. God has enlarged the borders of our mind. He has enlarged the territory territory of our thinking uh, and so people of God here uh, your mindset has to be broader uh, your mindset has to be broader in 2022 uh, your work ethic has to be broader uh, your generosity has to be broader uh, look at somebody say we're dealing with a broad scale uh, we're dealing with a broad scale now uh, I encourage you all uh, not to keep working uh, out of the same mindset uh, you had in 2021 uh, if you're still making decisions uh, the same way uh, if you're still governing your life life uh, the same way. Uh, you're not ready for the remarkable. Uh, but if you've gone broader, uh, if you're open to the word of God, uh, if you're open to the vastness of God, uh, I told you uh, not long ago uh, that your big vision uh, is too big for your little head. You have to have a big head in order to Operate uh, where God wants to take you, uh, people of God. Uh, if you were in the 20th hour 
thousand last year. God's getting ready to promote you to the fifty thousand. If you were in the seventy five thousand last year, God's getting ready to promote you to the hundred thousand. Ah, baby, you can't see it, but I see it in my mind. I see it in my heart. I see myself going bigger. I see myself going broader. My territory has been enlarged. There are no boundaries, no stipulations, no hindrances, no parameters to where God is going to take me. Somebody say, you have to go broader. Your work ethic has to be broader. Come on, for what God want to do for you, you can't work like you did last year. If you got up eight every morning, time for you to get up at six. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If you prayed for 15 minutes last year, it's time to graduate to 30. Somebody say broader, 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 broader. Come on, if you only cleaned up one room out of the whole year, it's time for you to get the whole house clean now. What am I trying to say? Listen to this. You have to govern your life out of a totally different mindset. Don't even pay your bills the same way. Church got quiet on that one. Don't even pay your bills the same way. Can I tell y'all a stress-free method? Ask God to help you to work toward paying your bills one day out of every month. Y'all missing what I'm saying. See, some of y'all can't get to that. Because it's during the 15th, and I ain't got it until the 13th. You know, there's something else to do. I said, pray and ask God to work your way. To pay all your bills one day a month. Do you know how stressful you would be not to have to remember the 5th, the 8th, the 13th, the 26th, the 27th, and the 30th? See what I'm talking, some of y'all can't even comprehend. Comprehend, pay your bills one day out of every month and you have 30 days dress for your bills. Y'all, 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 see y'all still in that old mindset. I hear y'all, he don't know, I don't have to know cause I've been there before, but now I pay my bills one day a month. One day a month. I've worked my way, and you don't have to have a whole lot of money to do that. You just have to structure your life. I'm not saying you can just jump and do that now, but you should be worked by March. Now, this is if you want to. If you, if you want to experience a broader, stress-free life, if you want to experience a remarkable 29 days, and only one day you got to pay bills. You feel better on the day all your bills are paid. But it takes strategy. And so what I'm saying is that your mindset has to be broader. Your work ethic has to be broader. Your generosity has to be broader. What you give, what you serve, if you're still doing the same thing, you're not ready for the remarkable. And so here, we were talking about building a house upon a rock. And uh, 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 Elder Tiff was singing about the chief cornerstone, not knowing that I was going to teach about that. And I told you all, last year, last year in December, we laid a foundation. Come on, let's go, Carnell. Uh, 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 we laid a foundation uh, uh, of where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do. And, 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 and we began to dig deep. We began to dig deep and lay that foundation. It don't look pretty. Look at somebody say, it don't look pretty. But it sure is sturdy. 
See, we want to get to the pretty stuff first. But see, I told you all, we lay our foundation in the Word. We lay our foundation in prayer. We lay our foundation in fact. And we lay our foundation. You don't wait. You know, and I told you all, somebody uh, uh, planning to build a house in our subdivision and have it all staked out. See, they, they had to enlarge their territory first. They got to stake my property goes to here, and it's as wide as this. And I can dig as deep as that. So I start laying a foundation. Foundation. Let's go to the next one and see, people of God, your foundation has to be sturdy. It has to be sturdy. You don't play. You cannot. You can. You can. You can. Uh, 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 uh. Build the frame of your house with aluminum siding, but you can't build no foundation with nothing but a rock. Did you hear what I'm saying? And so therefore, you gotta begin to build your foundation. You build it as sturdy. Let's go to this one. And so you build your foundation, listen to this, for as big as you want your house to be. Your whole house has to have a foundation under it. And so, uh, I was telling you all how essential it is to build your foundation. But listen to this. Uh, uh, in Matthew 21 and 42, Jesus said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. Uh, this is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 2 and 20 and it says and art built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself is the what? Chief cornerstone. So therefore, people, we were teaching or singing earlier, Christ alone, cornerstone. Young is what I just said. Christ alone, cornerstone. And so people of God, if you don't understand, the, and so I was looking up why the cornerstone uh, was so important. Uh, and it said that Jesus uh, is the chief cornerstone. So in my discovery, I learned in relation to architecture, a cornerstone is traditionally the first stone laid for the structure which all other stones lay in reference. The first stone is so essential for the structure because the first stone is how all the other stones line up. This is why we have to have Jesus as the chief cornerstone. Here we're in 2022. We want the remarkable, but I came to tell you, don't come here with your philosophy. Don't come here with your opinion. Don't even come here with your experiences. But you got to lay the cornerstone. The cornerstone is Jesus. If Jesus ain't in it, I'm not going to build it. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. If Jesus is not in it, when I put Jesus in it, the foundation is strong. When I put Jesus in it, it shall not be shaken. When I put Jesus in it, it shall not be moved. When Jesus is the cornerstone, the wind may blow, the storm may rise, the tree may shake, but it will shake it because Jesus, somebody said Jesus, is the cornerstone. Look at somebody say, all the other stones line up behind Jesus. Did y'all hear what I say? The first stone is the chief. The first stone 
is the superior. What stone did you lay? At 1159, 2021. If it wasn't Jesus, it ain't gonna stand. Here we go. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is what? See, people of God, we want all the benefits of God, but we don't want Jesus to be the chief stone. Come on, the chief stone. Make sure that the foundation is secure. The chief stone, make sure that the foundation is strong enough for any turbulence, for any bolstered wind. The chief stone, make sure the foundation is strong enough to endure a tsunami. The chief stone, make sure the foundation is strong enough to endure a 7.5 earthquake. The chief stone, make sure that the foundation, that's why whenever there's a tornado, whenever there's a hurricane, you don't go hide in the attic, you don't hide on the first floor, you go down to where the foundation is, and you hide among the rocks. Somebody say the chief dog. Where you hide? Have you ever thought about that? You don't hide on the second floor. You don't hide on the main floor. You hide down there where the foundation is. Because when everything else fell, see, this is why it's hard for the foundation to fall. Because the foundation is built in a hole. Y'all not getting it. The foundation is built in a hole. Look at somebody say, you're going to be safer in the hole. You got to get down in the hole. You can't pray or stay among the fine furniture, among the floor and the ceiling windows. If you're going to be safe, you got to get down in the hole and hide. And everything else will fall on you, but when they search it over all the debris, if they find you alive, it's going to be down in the hole. Somebody say there's safety in the hole. Chief Cornerstone. Chief Cornerstone. The foundation don't fall because you built it in a hole. I wonder what kind of hole have you built for your spiritual life? Since last October, we got all excited about the prophecy by this time next year. And the prophecy is going to come to pass. But the only one that's going to be standing is the one that's standing in the hole. If you read the scripture, it says the storm is going to come. The winds are going to beat vehemently. Come on, somebody. The winds are going to beat vehemently. Don't think 2022 is going to be a stress-free year. We are already on an uprise, on a surge again. But this time, somebody say this time, we're going to be hiding in the hole. Foundation. Somebody say the foundation. Ah, the foundation makes sure it's secure. Uh, foundation makes sure it's level. And the foundation makes sure that the rest 
of the rocks are pointed in the right direction of where you are trying to go. And so here, people of God, we told you uh, that God has enlarged our territory. But look at me. Uh, why did he enlarge your territory if you're not going to build nothing? What do you need property for if you're not going to build something new? What do you need greater borders for if you're not going to build something different? Why does he need to enlarge you? Why does he need to bless you? Why does he need to increase you? Well, I don't know why you don't, you don't want to increase. But see, I realize that what God has for me is too big for my head. So now, I don't operate out of the same way. I operate out of a big head. I have a big head vision. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I know where God has for me. And this time around, I see it. Whether we're in church or whether we're shut down at home, this time, I got a better understanding. If we have to shut down again. It's just going to give me more time to work on my architectural structure. It's just going to give me more time to figure out what I want here and what I want there. And when things open up, I'm ready. Somebody say I'm ready to pour my cement in my foundation because Jesus is the chief cornerstone and in Christ alone the weak are made strong because of the chief cornerstone somebody shall glory we didn't know what happened when it first hit us but look at somebody, say, I'm better prepared now. I'm better prepared now. I'm better prepared because we have already laid my foundation. And so, I don't know where you all are, but see, I laid my foundation back in October. And I told y'all, when I came to 20, 22, uh, you're going to start seeing some framework. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You're going to start seeing some framework. Come on, it ain't a finished project. Tell somebody it ain't a finished project. But it's some framework. I ain't did all of it, but you see I'm doing something. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Come on, somebody. What have you done since we laid the foundation last year? Have you started some framework? Have you started putting up the word so that therefore we can begin to build bricks around the word? Uh, or I lay aluminum siding. Uh, and this is what I love about framework. Uh, you can build it uh, any way you want to build it. Uh, if you want to rest out, uh, if you want a bi level house, uh, you can build it uh, any way you want to build it. Uh, this is what I love about it. Uh, I can use my imagination uh, and build what I want. Uh, maybe that big enough for y'all, but let me show you where I'm going. That's where I'm going. I see bigger. I see broader. I see more. I see greater. I see the remarkable. I see the incredible. I see the magnanimous for my life, for my future, the way I'm going. It's going to be remarkable. I wish I had somebody that wanted it too. It's going to be remarkable. By the time I get finished, don't be hating on me. Because as you started early, you can have it too. Somebody say remarkable. Look at this. This is what I love. You can build your life like you see it in your mind. It don't matter what nobody else thinks. 
he most of y'all, when y'all look at that, you start saying, Lord, the taxes is gonna be too high. Lord, the gas bill is gonna be too much. Lord, the water bill is gonna be. But what you don't know, if God bless you to get that, do you hear what I'm saying? The water bill ain't nothing. The taxes ain't nothing. If God bless you to get that far, he's gonna take you all the way. Look at somebody say, the Lord will provide. You don't have to be scared of your vision. You don't have to be intimidated of your vision. Go as God give you and watch the Lord provide. Look at somebody say, you gotta go broader. Gotta go broader. Now, I'm using this as a metaphor for your life. I'm using this as an example for your life for 2022. Y'all gotta operate out of the big head. Amen. Did you hear what I say? Don't come here with your little head no more. <laughs> Don't come here with your little head no more. Don't work in this church with your little head no more. Don't serve in this church with your little head no more. Don't give in this church with your little head no more. Whatever you do, look at somebody and say, whatever you do, do it out of your big head. Some of you, you still see the same money coming in. But see your little head, only see that money. My big head, see money coming from different sources. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I thank God for my check, but I'm believing him for a bonus. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm believing him for the wealth of the wicked, which is laid up for the chap. I'm believing God for what my eyes are seeing. My ears ain't heard. Neither has it entered into my mind the good things. The matter say good things. The good things. The Great thing, the, the magnanimous thing, the, the remarkable thing that God has in store for who? Me. I didn't hear you for who? Me. I didn't hear you for who? Me. I decided there's going to be a total shift for my life. Yeah. Did you hear what I say? Total shift. Somebody say total shift. Total, total. Total shift all the way around. Total, total shift all the way around. Shift the way I think. Shift the way I act. Shift the way I respond. Shift the way I do things. Shift the way I go. Shift what I say. Shift how I live. Total shift. He didn't bring you at the 2022 to still be the same old you. Somebody say, shift me, Lord. Shift me, Lord. Ah, people of God, and I'm going to come back to this in one minute, but we're on a consecration. Well, let me just say, I'm on a consecration. I don't know what y'all doing. I'm on a consecration, and uh, 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 it was kind of hard for me this week, you know why? Because we ain't been in a consecration in a, in a couple of years due to COVID and all that kind of stuff. And when you get out of the train of doing things, that kind of, you know, kind of, kind of, you know. And I had consecration anxiety. <laughs> I, I, I found out what a consecration anxiety. And I texted my wife, and you know what consecration anxiety is? When your flesh don't want to obey what the word of God says. I know this ain't y'all, but for me, I get mad sometimes when I can't do what I want to do. I just got angry. Couldn't go get the slushy. Couldn't go get the donut. Couldn't get no fried chicken. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Couldn't have no french fry. Couldn't get a hamburger. Couldn't have no bread. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, I, I'm like, I just get mad. And it's a good thing you went nowhere around me. Because I might have took it out on you on accident. That's called, listen to me, consecration anxiety. I, I text my wife and say, Bertie, you know what I learned? Flesh just won't what it wants. Can I tell y'all something? Flesh don't let up because you want a consecration. Flesh don't say, I'm going to leave you alone for 21 days. I was mad. And you know the devil stopped trying to get you to play a game. Okay, so I can get lettuce and tomato and that's a salad, you know, and I can just chop up pieces of beef in it. So I can get my protein. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I can have fruit and vegetables. So I go to McDonald's and get an apple pie and just eat the apple outside of the crust. The devil be bringing all kind of crazy stuff to your mind to help you to find a way to get out of what God. But you know why I stayed on my consecration? Anybody want to know why? Anybody want to know why? Because the Bible said this guy. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. It said this kind. See, you don't know me, but I know me, and I know I'm up this kind. This kind only. Somebody say only. This time only. It's your birthday today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna send y'all a vegan cake. A vegan fruit cake with some vegetables and onions. <laughs> I'm gonna make it like a salmon croquette and put a candle in it. <laughs> but listen, listen, I stayed on the other Veronica because I was honest with myself. This came. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Only, did y'all hear what I say? There's no other way. There's no other way. If there was another way, I would try it. But this can only come out by fasting and praying. Amen. Fasting and praying. People, I was so mad. I sang worship and prayed. Sang worship and prayed. Sang worship and prayed. Sang, and I'm like, so what else can I do? Sang worship and prayed. I got tired of singing, and worshiping, and praying. So what am I supposed to do now? I don't pray. I don't sing. I don't worship. And I still got eight more hours. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I know I ain't by myself. I, I, I know. Y'all ain't saying that, but I'm just exposed myself. I just got mad. I turned everything off. The only thing I look at the news. I look at the news from 4 o'clock to 6.30. What else can I do? News I don't even look at. I'm trying to find the news so I can look at something. What else can you do? But see, I just get mad. And then I start focusing on my brain. Where I'm going. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I start focusing on where I was. And what I was doing, y'all ain't hearing nothing. I start focusing on where I'm going. <laughs> Hold on, and what it's gonna take for me to get there. Here, let me bring out this part real quick. And so we lay the foundation on the word of God. But then God showed me here uh, on the framework. Go oh, here, uh, Hebrews 11, Carnell. Uh, through faith, we understand that the world was what? Right. Through faith, we understand that the world were what? Right. 
the world were what? Framed. Framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And so Apostle Collins, God began to show me something. We build the foundation with God's word. The chief cornerstone is God's word, that's Jesus. But we frame, go back, go back to the frame. But we frame our word, world, look at me, with our words. Y'all miss what I just said. Listen to this. You can use imagery to frame your year as vast or as big as you want it. Look at this. After you lay the foundation with the word, then you frame it with your words. Did you hear what I just said? After you build the foundation with the word, then you frame it with your word. Or uh, 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 do like this. Tell somebody, build it with the word and frame it with your words. You lay your foundation with the word, but you frame your structure with your word. How, 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 how can you validate that Bishop McGee go with me to Mark 11 and 23? For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall uh, 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 believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. We know that God framed the world with his words. See, one of you all's problem is y'all hang around too many people that agree with your negativity. You hang around too many people that agree with just about everything you say. You need to live with somebody to challenge you. You need to live with somebody that don't let you have no pity party. You need to live with somebody to say, but you can do it. But you can make it, but you can go through. You have what you say. And people, uh, 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 what are you going to have? What are you going to have? Say, whatsoever I say. What are you going to have? What are you going to have? What are you going to build? Come on, whatsoever you say. What are you going to have? Y'all scared to say that? You can't, scared to be, you can't be scared to say it. You can't be scared to be. See, can I just tell you all something? Most of the reason. Most of us don't like to graduate to a higher level because it's going to take too much work to get there. But I told you early on in this message, you're going to have to have a broader work ethic. Work harder. Work, and, and, and so some of us are just not willing to pay the price. But then don't say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to me when you see me up there in the four figures in the six figures, rather. Don't say nothing to me. Don't ask me how I get there, because I'm trying to take you with me while I'm on my way. Y'all missing what I'm saying. And so people, you frame your world with your words. You frame your world with your words. And while I was preparing for this, Lord took me back to, I think it was like in 2017 and 2018. I said, God, I want to own it. I want to own it. I want to own everything that I have. I want to own it. I want to own it. And, and, and I didn't see how, and I want to own it. And then, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you said for a while, and then the, the pandemic came and shocked stuff off. And we were trying to stay in it. Let's know and own it. I say, God, I want to own it. We're going to frame our world with the word of God. 
our 2022. We're not afraid, we're concerned, but we're not going to be foolish either. Whether they shut, whether we have to shut down or, or whatever, we still gonna have a remarkable 2022. Amen. Still, still a remarkable. I'm thinking broader. I'm almost done. I'm thinking broader. And so, people of God, here, I, I, I'm gonna have whatsoever I say. Why am I gonna have it? Because I'm doing what? Because I'm using. I'm using different building material. Let me tell you how I want you to operate. Now, one more time. Number one, I want you to operate out of perception. Somebody say perception. This went with our whole storyline. This went with our whole storyline about the Shunammite woman. You know, she operated out of perception. But you know what? Uh, 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 Pastor Bernadine, Dr. Dr. B, she likes to be called Dr. B. Uh, uh, the Bible only mentioned that she perceived that he was a man of God. But you know what? I realized that many of them were operating out of perception. Remember the woman with the son with the cruise of oil and a handful of meal? She had to perceive. In order to get, make him a cake first, she had to perceive he was a man of God. Come on, somebody. Remember the woman whose husband died and she had two sons and she, she had to pay his debt? She had to perceive he was a man of God because she did what it is she said. He told her to go borrow vessels and pour the oil and keep borrowing more vessels until your oil is, is, is completely uh, depleted. And listen what the Bible said. God said, pay your bills and live off of the rest. <laughs> Somebody say perception. I don't want y'all to do nothing this year. Look at me, say, say, say I'm not going to do nothing. Unless it's out of perception. And this year, the remarkable, you need to make the kingdom of God your greatest investment. Did you hear what I said? And I'm not just talking about giving. I'm talking about serving. I'm not just talking about serving. I'm talking about interceding. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about really praying. I hope y'all been calling your different person out every day. <laughs> praying for a different person. On the day I was mad, I said, God, I'm not, look, I'm tired. It seemed like the day I was mad, he gave me more people to pray about. I was praying till my mouth was dry. And I'm mad because I can't have what I want. I parked my car in the garage so I can't sneak out and go get nothing so Bernard can't hear me. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. Amen. Amen. And so my poor wife, bless her heart. You know, and she's real big on uh, social media and everything. She tries so hard, so, so she don't get on social media, she just be playing word games, word games. Tim, can you find this word for me? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got nothing else to do. We done prayed, fast, and ate our vegetables, and all we can do is find words. <laughs> can you find this word for me? I've been trying, and then I can't find it, and so I'm mad. <laughs> People, let me just tell you all something. We're going to beware of consecration anxiety. It's nothing but a trick of the devil. Okay, operate out of perception. But I got to go, go back to the frame. Go back to the frame. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Be, be, and, and, and let me tell you, because you got to remember where you're going. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Get it in your mind. Keep it ever before you. The vision is for an appointed time. It shall speak and not lie. So yes, we're going to get frustrated. Yes, God, looking at the news. McDonald's came on. To all be better, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pizza, onion, 
on a firm labor. And the stuff was just dripping down the bird. I'm looking at the TV. The devil will tempt you even when you're looking at the news. But you know what? I can look, look at somebody. Look, po point there, point there, and look at somebody. I say, I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. Give God a hand praise on that one. I'm doing a good work. I'm doing a good work. I'm doing a good work. If I have to say so myself, I'm doing a good work. If I have to encourage myself in the Lord, I'm doing a good work. It ain't finished yet, but I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. We got 14 more days to go. <laughs> Jesus, I'm doing a good work. I'm doing a good work. I'm doing a good work. That's what you have to say. I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. Let me go here. Let me go here. Okay, so go back. I'm sorry, Carnell. I'm going to stay with my notes now. I want you all to start operating out of perception. If you perceive that your man and woman of God is a true man or woman of God, then you don't, you don't have to understand what they say do. If I say come down here Thursday and meet me for prayer, y'all ain't saying that. If you perceive that I hear from the Lord, did y'all hear what I say? Come on, if you perceive what what a uh, last Sunday powerful move of God, Dr. Bernie Dean ministered and we prayed and I'm telling you, and God just met her in the house. You know, perception. You receive that if you perceive that she was a woman of God. Operate out of perception. Don't second guess what comes out of your leader's mouth. I'm not building no flowers on me. But if you don't believe me, you shouldn't be under me. Amen. Look at them as they operate out of perception. This is what we're going to do. What's the next thing to do? Don't let your big head vision intimidates you. Don't let it intimidate you. When God presents something to you, don't say, Lord, I can't do that. He wouldn't have showed it to you if you couldn't do it. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't let what you see in your spirit, what God put in your spirit. If he tell you to do something you ain't never done before. If he tell you to give something you've never given before. If he tell you to go apologize to somebody you don't owe an apology to. Don't let your big head vision intimidate you. If God laid it in your spirit. He laid it in your spirit because you can handle it. Point at somebody say, you can handle you. Tell them you can handle the new you. Come on, you can handle the new you. You're going you, to have to pay a little, a little more than you normally pay, but you can handle the new you. So operate out of perception. Don't let your big head vision intimidate you. Stop saying, but it takes time. People, we've been saying that ever since 2018. When people don't want to dive into something, they say, but it takes time. It takes time. Y'all like the man at the pool of Bethesda. He never got healed because it took time. Y'all missing what I'm saying. Every time the angels will come, he would make an excuse. It takes time. All you had to do was, was make use of the time and jump in the pool and he would have got healed. Stop making excuses to delay your vision. Last thing I want you to do. Stop being measly with generosity. Stop being measly with generosity. Stop buying your friends new gifts and giving the homeless people old gifts. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me now. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. 
taking your, your brother, your sister out to a good dinner, but you get the homeless people your leftovers. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me now. If you see them homeless, say, wait right here. Give me about 20 minutes. I'm going to order you everything you want. Y'all ain't talking to me now. It's something about that giving that really gets us. Something about that giving. And can I tell you something? Some of us are prejudiced. Come on. We do certain for a certain category of people, and y'all ain't saying nothing. And we will not do a certain thing for a category of a lesser type of person. But the Bible said, be careful how you entertain strangers, because it may be an angel unaware. You don't know what angel you're treating measly. Stop being measly with your generosity. Come on, somebody. I don't think I ever used that word before that word just came up in my spirit. God said, stop being measly. It's another word for stingy. <laughs> it's another word for cheap. Come on, operate out of perception. Don't be intimidated by your big head vision. Don't let that intimidate you. And stop being measly in your generosity. Okay, so here, people of God, and I'm getting ready to close here. I wanted to show you all and prove to you all that our 2022 is going to be better than our 2021 because we're using different building material. Give the Lord a hand, brother. Well, did you enjoy the word of the Lord on today? Somebody say 2022 is the year of the remarkable you. Listen, I pray that you and our streaming audience, I pray that you are blessed by our word on today. Amen. We've had such a wonderful and profound time here, but we started way back in October preparing for 2022, the year of the remarkable. And so we've laid our foundation, and on today, we found out that we frame our world or our life or our house with our word. We build it with God's word, but we frame it with ours. And I want to minister to you as well on today that you do not have to have a replica of 2021. 2022 is the year for the remarkable you. And I want to challenge you to, 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 to just pay attention to that word if you have to play this message over and over again. Operate out of perception. Uh, 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 don't let your don't be intimidated by your big vision that God gives you. Don't be measly with your generosity. I want to encourage you to embrace the remarkable you in 2022. One thing that I do want to share with you, uh, the meaning of the number 22. The meaning of the number 22 uh, in New numerology, the number 22 represents the fulfillment of one's greatest aspirations. One's greatest aspirations as well as the sense of strength and accomplishment. It says, beware the number 22 is among the most powerful numbers. Well, one reason, because we know what the Bible says, where two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he will be in the midst of us. So 22 to beware, because it's one of the powerful numbers. And don't be surprised. Somebody in the audience say, don't be surprised. And what God do for you in 2022, most likely as a result of divine desires to inspire you to strive for greater heights. And so I want to encourage you during this year of the remarkable. We just believe it. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you 
shape. And I want you to God, speak a remarkable thing over your life. And if you didn't get a chance to sow or to give your uh, first offering for this year uh, uh, on, on, on the first Sunday of last year, I want to challenge you, those of you that were so an uh, offering, just an offering of $122, $122. Amen. Many of you did not get the opportunity on Facebook and on uh, 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 um, uh, uh, YouTube, but I just wanted to share, get that opportunity to you. You can see uh, uh, the, the the remarkable gift of one hundred and twenty-two dollars in the year of twenty twenty-two. And so I, I want to challenge you. You can see all the giving methods methods on the bottom of the screen. We believe in God that this is going to be the most remarkable year. Yes, we're still in the pandemic. Yes, there's another third. Yes, they're even predicting a third variant coming in the spring. But God knows all things. But this is what I've learned. Only just hope has the final say. So regardless of what happened, 2022 is still the year for the remarkable year. So if you would uh, want to join us in sowing that seed of $122, amen, for the first offering of the year, or you could just sow it, amen, into our ministry, give our perception, amen, if you perceive this to be a, a, a valid ministry, a, a ministry of soundness and wholeness, we welcome you to do that in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We are so excited, those of you that are streaming or are watching by social media. We are so, so ecstatic about what God is doing. Yes, there is a uh, pandemic out there. There is corona, but rona is not higher than the name of the Lord Jesus. And so every year, those of you that know Dr. B, amen, and a great time of January has been involved with champions. And so it's been two years, and we feel mightily uh, and heavily uh, anointed of the Lord to bring a few people under the same roof on the 22nd of January. That's about two weeks away, and we are very ecstatic about the uh, champion's encounter. And so, no, we won't be having eggs and bacons and coffee, but we will be having a Shekinah glory uh, destiny gathering. And so, yes, we are very, very, very happy about what God is doing. So I need you to meet me here. And as you can see, you'll see it, amen, on the screen, rather. Uh, the Champions Encounter, January the 22nd, here, FSM 16012 South Cottage Grove at 8 a.m. You want to be here. There's going to be a glory of God. We're praying around the clock. We have intercessors that have joined me, and we are excited. Meet us here, amen. We will be starting on time, and I want to say, amen, starting. Uh, now you'll be able to go in and go into a link amen and register amen we will be going according to CDC amen rules and regulations I want you to know the first 122 or so that register will only be permitted in and you have to be vaccinated amen you have to prove that and so we are doing what uh, none other than what your jobs or the restaurants may be doing amen we are walking in wisdom and I know that God is going to be here so for those of you that's been vaccinated amen you will meet us here you have to register and guess what you can only register one person so therefore everyone will have a chance to register themselves and tell somebody about it love and share amen and meet us here on the 22nd there is a word for the champions on that day God bless you bless you, bless you. Well, we pray that you've enjoyed our service on today. Amen. We're excited about the word. Uh, uh, you have to go back to some of our other videos to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about the big head blessing. The big, your vision is so big that it cannot be contained in a small head. So we want you to be encouraged. But listen, uh, we pray that you'll meet us again this time next week. Tag a neighbor and a friend and let them know that we're on every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And like we say all the time, don't worry about nothing, but trust God for everything. <laughs>